Today we're getting started on the footings for a front entry deck, so I thought it's the perfect opportunity to talk about the basics of digging post holes with an auger. Before you start any work, remember you've got to call before you dig. Have the work area checked for underground utilities. The first step is to follow your building plan. I think the easiest way is by using a simple board and batten system. You don't have to get the stakes in the perfect location. You just need the cross piece roughly in line with the holes and then you set the exact layout line with the string. I just shift the string to match the plan. I follow the same process for the cross strings or mark the post locations on the string with a piece of tape. Now all I have to do is drop a plumb from each intersection or piece of tape and mark the ground. The other nice thing about this system is that once the hole locations are marked, I can untie one end of the string, dig the holes, and then retie the string to locate my J-bolts when I pour. Digging post holes can be a brutal job, but you can make it a lot easier with the right tools. One tool you'll need no matter what type of digging you do is a clamshell post hole digger. You can dig all your holes with just this tool. And if your soil is rocky, this may just be your best option. But digging a lot of footings with one of these is tough work. But it's still worth having to fine tune the hole size and clean out the bottom of holes. A couple other tools worth having are a large pry bar. This comes in handy if you run into rocks. And it's also nice to have a narrow shovel, like a tile shovel or a trenching shovel like this one. Now if you're going to be digging multiple holes or they're more than six inches in diameter, I highly recommend renting a power auger. And if you're digging a lot of large footings, you might want to consider hiring a contractor that's got a skid steer loader or a tractor to dig the holes. I guess the best way to determine this would be to visit your rental center and see what they recommend. Today I'm going to be using a one-man tow-behind auger. I really like this type of auger because I think it's a little easier to handle than a two-man auger and it's really easy to haul. It works like a trailer, the motor's on one end, controls are on the other, and it balances like a teeter-totter. The other feature I like about this type of auger is that it has a reverse drive. So if the auger bogs down or binds on anything, I can back it out. Today I'll be using this 8 inch diameter auger. It's 3 feet long, but I need to get down to 42 inches. So I'm also going to use this 12 inch extension. I'll drill down the depth of this bit, pause, disconnect, add the extension, and finish the hole. Before I start digging, I like to dig out a small hole that's centered on each hole location. This helps the auger from wandering offline when you first start digging. Next, I attach the auger bit to the drive shaft and I'm ready to start the engine and dig. I'll dig all of my holes with just the auger, then attach the extension and go back and finish each hole. It's easier than attaching and removing the extensions over and over. I like to pause every foot or so and let the auger clear the soil out of the hole. And before I lift out the auger, I stop moving it and lift it out to bring most of the soil with it. Well, we're done with the auger, but we're not quite done yet. The auger only pulls out about three quarters of the soil, so next I'm going to use the clamshell digger to clean out the rest of the loose soil and bell out the bottom of the hole just a little bit. Okay, we've got our 42 inch depth, the holes are dug, we're ready for inspection, then all that's left is to insert our forms and pour concrete. 